So on the left hallway, there's going to be um, there's going to be three three doors here, and in my case, the attic and the second door will definitely kill you. The center door might kill you, and then the invisible door will definitely save you. So there's four things that could happen here. Two definite deaths, one definite win, and one possible win or death. Let's do, let's do the two that are definite deaths. Uh, those are very easy. Um, the attic and the second door. So in our code, in our code, we're going to set ourselves up as usual with an event listener and then a function. So attic mc dot add event listener. with a um, touch, event. touch event dot touch tap in all caps. Yep, perfect, touch underscore tap, comma, um, fn, we'll say fn go dead. Function go dead. And the next line function fn go dead parentheses colon void and fn go dead inside the parentheses event touch event. Yep. So the attic definitely then is a dead end. So simply, the code to go to the bad ending, movie clip dot go to and play frame one of scene end bad in quotes. Whoops, movie clip back here has then this dot root. Okay, so the attic is set up when you tap it, run that function, go to the death scene, and then the code where it actually moves you. The second door is the exact same thing. And here's an instance where we can save a little bit of effort because we definitely need another event listener for the second door, but we don't need a separate function. We've done over and over that we have some event listener to then run some function to do something. But here, two different things will do the same thing. So these two different cookable things both do the same thing. Play this function, play this function. If you, t if you tap this object, if you tap this object. So we don't need another complete function for the other door. We can reuse the same function because it will have the same result you go to the dead end. So I'm going to actually group them up over here just because for aesthetics I'm putting together two things that I'm going to click on that will definitely go to the bad ending and I'm defining the bad ending. We have the bad ending, we're going to have a good ending. So I know that I'm going to have a different function, function go live or go win, whatever. I have a brand new function that definitely goes to the good ending. Then how we get to that will be slightly different. Uh, so I'm going to make a new function, go win, 
I'm going to copy the existing one, actually. Paste it here. Function go win. Not go in, but go win. And then movie clip this go to and play one, scene, and good. just fine in terms of we are creating event listeners for two different things but with the same result that function go dead <laughs> that function go dead is defined right here we go to the bad end we, uh, we have not written code yet to use this function but I've made a function that will go win the way to be able to get to go win will be those two different ways of either the hidden door which will always go to the good ending and then the more complex, the main door may or may not kill you. There will be a little bit of randomness to it. So we'll set that up in just a moment. Um, save it and run it. We wrote a lot of code. Let's confirm this works so far. Save it and run it. And when you go to the left hallway, definitely you'll be able to click on the attic or the second door, and they will go to the bad ending. And then when we confirm that works, we'll come back to then make the hidden door work, and then the main door. Let's go ahead and save and run that. Let me just check if my code is, is good. So this left hallway will be a little bit different. Every room has been slightly different. And I'm kind of doing it very obviously, but as you make your own version, you might make more than one room be the same concept as before. I'm sort of making it a little harder on the player in that every room is a new way to interact. You could have you know, a couple of rooms that you interact the same way first. Then you get to a brand new room and it's a little different and then you make it, you kind of go slowly to get to that more complexity. Because now if, if they go for the very first time to the left hallway, you know, they, they, they have to interact with it there. So the game starts, I play, I open the door, I break the window, I won't go to the right because I have not programmed a way to get out of the right hallway. If I go to the right hallway, I have to deal with killing the mini boss and I have a program that you cannot. So you could make a way, you could have a back button if you want in the right hallway. There could be a way to come back. You could have it that like there's a little sliver on the left edge that is clickable to go back. Right now, if you go to the right hallway, you're dead because you probably will not be able to tap the mini boss enough. Anyway, so if I go now to the left hallway, I have the possibilities right here. Uh, in my case, when I drew the yellow background, I need to make it slightly larger because there's a little bit on the edges that, I, that I'm not covering. I'm seeing the edge not fully covered. So I'll just go back in a moment here and make sure that my left hallway, the edges of this are a little bit even further out because now that I tested it, I see that there's a little bit of emptiness. Okay, so the central door doesn't do anything. I haven't programmed it yet. The attic or the right door, let's go to the right door, dead. Now I can make it also play a sound, I could also make it play animation, but at the very least I've got that, that you die. Game over. Okay, this scene's already been programmed a while ago, so I'll, okay, I'll try again, play again. And sometimes games like this, you, you just try them a few times and you get the pattern and you memorize what you need to do, and hopefully interesting enough that people keep coming back. Okay, let me try that again. Uh, the right hallway didn't work, what about if I try the attic? Nope, dead there again. So two things definitely that will kill you, and then we'll do the other two right now. The, um, let's do the main door. We'll do the hidden door in a moment. That'll be very easy, because that'll just be the main door playing go win. The central door is going to rely on a little bit of randomness. The idea is, before I write the code, I will write actually a multi-line comment like this. 
Let's do this. Let's write the multi-line comment so that I can write multiple sentences. So the idea is the main door may or may not take you to the good ending. So randomly let the main door take you to the good or bad ending. Randomly. This requires create a function to make random numbers. from 1 to 10, for example. If they pick the right, if they, not pick, if they get the right number, fn go win, or else they got the wrong number fn go dead so this is the general concept the human readable you know the explanation of what i want to happen the coding of it will be uh, mostly code we've already seen and then a little bit of code that is new but the idea is I want to wait a way to generate random numbers. And actually, we have a, a very good code snippet already for us. We'll borrow the code snippet instead of making one ourselves. There's a code snippet that will make a number, and you can pick. Pick me a number between 1 and 10, or 1 and 5. And if we do between 1 and 10, there's only you know a 10% chance that the person will survive clicking the central door. That may be too many possibilities, too many or too, too low of the odds. We can make it from 1 to 5, so they have a 1 in 5 chance to win. Or just an even and odd, from 1 to 2. If it's an even number, okay, they're going to win. If it's an odd number, they're going to lose, sort of like a coin flip. But we'll start it off with 1 to 10. Um, it will then check if the number that was randomly chosen was lucky number 7, they will go to a function win. Or else it wasn't seven, it was one or nine or ten or whatever, they go to function dead. So that's the general idea of what we need to do in order for the code to happen. We'll start to make up, we'll make our random number generator, which is in the code snippets. Let's open up the code snippets panel. This is inside of the action script. So when you open up code snippets right up here, it's inside of action script, actions. Uh, where did they put it? Here we go, generate random number. So I double click that to add it to my code here. So from the code snippet, I added it here. It gives a little bit of instructions and then how does it actually work. Okay, generate a random number. Generates a random number between zero and a limit number you specify. Instructions to change the maximum random value, change the number 100 in the last line. This code outputs the random number to the output panel. So breaking down the code that they gave us right here. Um, they created a function called fl generate random number as a parameter of a limit. What's the maximum number to get to? It'll go from 0 to, uh, to the maximum. Uh, the result of this function, instead of colon void, it's a number. It'll think of a number and return. It'll give us the number instead of void. Now they put the curly brace down here, instead of at the top like we normally would, so I'll move it up in a moment. Then there's some magic that happens here. A random number comes from a mathematical formula, blah, blah, blah. 
You don't have to care about that. Once it thinks about that number, it then returns it to us. The only thing that this does right now, if I run it, is in the output panel, it'll think of a number between 0 and 100. So we don't even need that trace right there. So let's clean up their code just a little bit. Um, I'm going to say, like, I'm just going to delete this stuff over here. I'm going to delete that part of the message. Just keep it like this. Generates a random number between 0 and limit. Plus, one of the, one of the great ways to, to pick a fight with programmers is to decide which is the right way to put the curly brace. All of this time, we've been putting the curly brace on the same line. When we wrote a function, we put the opening curly brace at the end, and then our code, and then we ended the curly brace. That's one way to do it, also known as the correct way. This one over here is another way to do it, also known as the wrong way. But you could put it here and here, and that code will work. And this is, programmers have been having this argument for decades. Where is the right place to put that curly brace? The right place is where you learn the first time. So if you took this class, you're learning to put it here, which is the right way. So you can leave the curly brace exactly where it was before, but obviously it looks horrible there because we're not used to it there. So I'm going to put it where it's supposed to be, right there. Obviously, don't put two. Don't leave the one below there and add a new one. That'll break your code. But now it looks like civilized code. It is right there, curly brace. And then might as well also put our normal message here and random number generator and then this final trace let's delete that that'll just show you the number in the output panel actually let's not delete it let's comment it out if we wanted to see the number that it generated in the output panel here it is we're saying the name of the function and from 0 to 100 so between 0 and 100 now, we have to double check if it um, if it includes a hundred, because numbers in in programming are funny, because it's actually going to start from from zero, so it's either going to be from zero to ninety nine or zero to one hundred. We'll, we'll confirm that in a moment. And this is limit plus one, so I would assume if we put a seven right here, seven plus one is eight. So I guess it's going to go from zero to eight. No, it's going to go from one to eight. The seven there, so why do they have that one there? Anyway, we'll see. So the uh, the point is that they gave us a, a little random number generator function. So all we need to do when we use the function is tell it what's our maximum number. I want to create an event listener for the main door. So when I press the main door, at that moment it'll think of a new random number. And if that random number was the right number, it'll then play function go in. Or else it was the wrong number, it'll go to function go dead. So next line, um, main door underscore mc dot add event listener. Event no, uh, touch touch event dot touch tap comma fn function main door function fn main door colon void curly braces Got event colon touch event function that it's, it's hanging out there ready to be used at some point. That function thinks of a random number when we use it. We haven't used it yet. This code then is the usual. 
there's something to click on, run some function. Okay, so that's all, we've seen all of that before. This one's new right here. So every time we click on the door, run the function main door function. Um, and every time we, we, we run that, that, that function, think of a random number. So we'll say var dead or not. That is a number, and it's equal to fl generate random number. I'll just copy it from right here so I don't mistype it. Parentheses 10. So we're saying from right to left, generate a random number from 0 to 10. Store it in this variable, dead or not. This variable holds numbers. This function creates numbers. I want to see what that number is, so we'll say trace the random number is plus dead or not. Let's let's pause to test it here before we get it fully working. It, it, it's not fully there, but I just want to confirm no errors so far. And I want to confirm that if I tap the main door, every time I tap the main door in the debug panel, it'll show you a new random number. So we're, because we have brand new ideas, I'm going to do it a little deliberately to confirm that step by step it, it's working. Because the new stuff is to work with random numbers. We will get a different random number every time we click. And once we confirm that every time we tap it, we get a different number, then we'll do, we'll come back to the conditional statement about if the number is the lucky number, 7, you go to win. Or else it wasn't 7, so you go to dead. And I want to debug that. No errors. I want to go to the left hallway. I'm going to tap that door a few times. Nothing will happen except for a number that appears in the debug panel. And I'm going to start small with 10 numbers. If I have 100 numbers, well, I only have, you know, 1% chance to get the right number. But anyway, I'm going to go here to play to the gate, window, left hallway. Don't tap anything except for... The thing in what is this? Error at at event listener. No one no one stopped me before I ran my code and you saw my misspelled code. Mm -hmm. Listener. That's not how you spell list listener. Listener. There we go. That's why it wasn't blue. Add event listener. No one ran up to my keyboard and said stop before I published it and made me waste all that time. Okay. Let's try that again. So, I'm going to go to the left and I'm going to confirm that when I click the main door, I get a um, random number. So I'm going to keep an, out, an eye out in the output panel. I'll go to the left, left. Okay, so I'm at the left. I'm going to tap the main door right here. The random number is 1. Tap it again. This time I got a 10, so it does include 10. It's going, to, it's going to be from 1 to 10. I don't think we're going to hit a 0, actually, so that's good. So any number between 1 and 10. So right now I'm just tapping it a bunch of times. Getting, oh, there is a zero actually. So it is between zero and ten. That's fine. So there's a ten, there's a seven. Okay, so I'm getting random numbers. The point of this is every time I click it, I'm going to get a different random number between one and ten. And so my my pseudo code, my concept again is randomly take you to good or bad, 
by creating a function that makes random numbers from 1 to 10. If they get the right number, go win. If they get the wrong number, go dead. So if I decide that the lucky number that will let you win is a 7, whenever I tap it, it'll think of a number. Right now, the last one was a 4. And we'll check, is dead or not equal to 7? If it is 7, go win. Or else it wasn't 7, go dead. So that'll bring back the conditional statement of if else. So still inside of the function, be careful here. We're going to go back to the. We're going to we're going to confirm that we're still in the main door function. This now has multiple things to do, whereas most of the time our function might have had like one line. Now we have multiple things. Think of a random number. Store it in that variable. Show us what it is, just to confirm we've got a number. Next up, conditional statement, if, parentheses, curly braces, else, curly braces, and if, else, to check the random number. So now here's the decision, if, else, if the number is 7 true, it'll go into this block, function go win. Or else, it doesn't equal 7, jumps to else instead, and runs go dead. So dead or not double equals 7. We've had single equals over and over, and a single equals is an assignment operator. We are assigning. Take the thing on the right and put it into the thing on the left. When we want to actually compare things, is one the same as one? We use the double equals. So it'll think of a number from one to ten, four, and it'll store it in this variable. The code will continue. Is 4 the same as 7? True or false? It's going to be false. So it jumps over to else, where we'll have go dead. If we run it again, and it thinks of, if it generates 7, is 7 the same as 7? True. It'll jump to this part. Go win. Fn win versus fn go dead just confirm my spelling go dead go win yep and slightly different also we have the parentheses here we didn't need parentheses up here where we're saying um, tap that object run this function this is a function this is a function it's just the syntax of it when it is up over here, we don't put those parentheses. We've never put the parentheses here. When we want to use that function when it's not in an event listener, we call it by its full uh, name. And so if the number we think of is exactly 7, play the win function to go to the winning ending. Or else you have a chance of 1 in 10. So most of the time you're going to die. So maybe a number between 1 and 10 is too much. Maybe a number between 1 and 3. So then I can say dead or not is equal to 2. If you have less possibilities, you increase the chance of winning. If you have a random number between 1 and 10, you have a lot less chance to win. Between 1 and 100, you're never going to win. Between 1 and 3, 1 and 4, you have more of a chance to possibly win. So I'll, I'll check that. I'll change these numbers in a moment. I think these numbers are too high. We'll, we'll fix them in a moment. I just want to see, just for fun, I'm going to run it now. I'm going to see how many times am I going to possibly uh, die. And what are we getting here? Um, uh, incorrect number of arguments expected. One. Um, did I spell that right? Function go win. Function go win. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, actually, wait a minute. Um, 
Oh, okay. Uh, never mind. We'll, we'll do it this way instead. We'll just copy the code here. Not the actual function. The function, I'm thinking of JavaScript, not ActionScript. Different language. Uh, these functions only run when something has been tapped. Well, ultimately, these functions run, and they simply go somewhere. So let's just take this part here. If 7 is equal to 7, go in, we will have this, we will have this line. If it's not 7, we will have that line. So I'm going to copy the, that, that line that actually moves you. Instead of go win, instead of go dead. We can only use those functions when they have been tapped on, and we didn't actually tap on them directly. Um, we, um, we tapped on the door, we, we did a random number, and, and so forth. So actually, it's this. It's, it's longer, but it's just a copy and paste. The end result of getting the right number is go to the good ending or the bad ending. In JavaScript, JavaScript is kind of a looser language. It's a little bit more forgiving. ActionScript is a little bit more harsh. So in action, in JavaScript, that would work. Run the call the function. But in in ActionScript, if you define a function to work a certain way, it can only further work a certain way. Whereas JavaScript is a little more forgiving. So instead, we just said run the code from the function. Anyway, I'll go to play. Go there, everything looks good so far. Break in. Go to the left hall. Okay, I have a one in ten chance. Let's try my luck. The random number that was generated was two. Is two the same as two? Nope. So it goes to the bad ending. Game over, I'm dead. I have to play again. So there's been one time I died. Play that again. Go to the whole game again. Go back to the right hallway, tap that again. I generated a 10. 10 is not 10. So I died two times. Or one more time. If I don't get it one more time, then I'll change the code. But that's what I'm saying. We have one in 10 chance of possibly winning. That's um, too small of a chance, isn't it? Let's try again. I got a three. Three is not equal to seven, so I'm dead. So I think it's a little too high. People are like, why do I keep dying? Why am, why am I going to still click it again? Um, so to change this up, maybe I only need from the generator up to three. And it will, it will also count zero. So zero, one, two, three. There's actually four possibilities. One in four chance might not be so bad. And now here, so if I put a 2, so we confirm that it's, it's 0 to 10, including you know, 0. So if you put a 10 there, it'll be 0 up to 10, so actually 11. Um, so here it'll be 0, 0 to 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3. It'll be 4 possibilities. Dead or not if it's 2, so 1 out of 4. If you just want kind of like either or, you can put a 1, and then you can put a 1. So random number between 0 and 1, including 0. So sometimes it'll think of 1, sometimes it'll think of 0, two possibilities. And then when you tap on it and when you get to here, it'll think of a number, 0 or 1. Is 0 the same as 1? Nope, you're dead. They try again, and then they get the 1. Is 1 equal to 1? Now, that doesn't mean that you increase your odds the more you play. Every time you play, it's randomly between 0 and 1. Just like when you flip a coin. You do know that you know you flip a coin 100 times, and statistically, you're going to get half and half tails and heads all the time. It's just statistics. So let's do it that way. Sort of a yes or no, possible yes or no. Result.
Once that's confirmed, then we will do the hidden door. That always takes you to the good ending, but it'll be hidden. Possibilities, hit that. I got a zero, so play one more time. Click that, go there again, hit it. Congratulations. So this time I got the one is one true. I, I confirm it in the output, and it went to the good ending, and there it is. I might want to have good music playing. Well, that would be up to you if you want. You need to take the code that previously worked to play music and just copy and paste it and change it for good music. The good ending doesn't work yet. Play and quit doesn't work. But based on what you did for the bad ending, you should be able to get that to work. And then the last thing is the invisible door. In a brand new layer, in a brand new layer, I'll call it hidden door. First, I'm going to draw a shape in a visible color. First, I'm going to draw the hidden hotspot, and I'll turn it into a symbol, and I'll give it an instance name, and I'll give it the event listener code, and it'll run good, and it'll run function go win. All of that's exactly the same. Then we'll show you about turning it invisible, which is just changing an alpha property. But we'll get to that. So I've drawn the shape. I'm going to turn it to the symbol MC hidden door. hidden door with an instance name hidden door MC my action script code I have the event listeners up here of go dead which then run that function I have the event listener I have the function definition of winning but I don't have an event listener it's easy, so I will just copy the, maybe I'll just copy it or, or write it manually, one of these bad ones and put it right here for, for a starting point, because I need an event listener to do something. The something will be go, win, and the thing I'm clicking on is hidden door. So that's exactly the same as we've done before, nothing different. Function go win. That function that we made a while ago that we haven't used, now it's got a use. Something to click on, something to run. So all that's exactly the same. The, um, the only possibility for clicking the invisible door, the hidden hotspot, is to win. Compared to the first two, that the only possibility of hitting the attic or the second door is to die. 
compared to the main door where we've got this randomness that sometimes you win, sometimes you don't. The one final trick is this object is completely opaque. It is completely visible. So we'll turn it invisible. Once you've got the code, we'll go back here to actually select it. In the properties, we have color effect. It's kind of hidden in a weird place. Color effect, style, alpha. Trans that's AKA transparency. Right now this object is completely visible. As we decrease the value there, we make it invisible. The object is still there, it's still interactive, it's still clickable, but now it's invisible. If you put it all the way down to zero, it's completely invisible, but there is something there. Obviously, if I click away, I lose it, but no, it's right there. So there's still an object there with zero visibility. Perhaps put it at 1% so that it's you know, almost, almost visible. I can barely see it on my screen at 1%. And um, you can look really hard and I can kind of see it here. There's an edge right there. So you could put it completely zero or you could put it at 1%. And if a person is kind of looking carefully on the screen, hey, that looks like something. What if I click it? And it goes to the good ending. If they never click it, that's fine too. They, but hopefully they think, okay, why is there like a big empty space there? Is there something there maybe? So some people will never click, will never think to click. Some people will explore and they'll get the definite good ending. Most people will go through the main door and um, that's, the, that's the secret there to making invisible things. Just change the alpha value. Once you've drawn it, now once you know that you've drawn it and it exists and you write the code, you just set the color effect to some alpha value that's very low, maybe even 10% if you want. I'll keep it at one. And then I'll debug that. smudges on the screen, but maybe I might notice that it's there. But then when I actually tap, definitely goes to the good ending. Okay, so I think that's, uh, that's as much as we will do for the lecture. Um, you, you have to go in and make sure that each of these scenes looks how you want. You have to make sure each of these functions how you want. We, we're not going to do the, the help back button together. You can do it. You should be able to do it with our experience. Um, the good ending, we didn't uh, make this one work, but you should be able to because it's based on the bad ending, which we got to work. Maybe you want a different music to happen during the um, during the bad ending um, so based on a different screen like the the welcome screen or the or the gate screen you could see what the code looks like to play music on a particular scene so then you can add a different music in the good ending because the good ending really doesn't have too much except for, you know, at the moment just a stop. So right there you're going to need the event listeners for play and quit. You're going to need the variables and such to play good music. Uh, I don't think I, I, I added extra good music. Maybe you can reuse the, the happy, you know, welcome music if you want. That you won the game. So you can do that. 
Um, but that's what we'll do. We'll have some lab time from now until 5 if you want to stay. If you just want to wrap it until 4, that's fine. I'll be here until 5 if you need it. And then on Wednesday, all day lab time, and then it'll be due at 4. And then um, you can get your A plus once you turn it in. So if it didn't quite work, let's do some lab time. I'll put my final version of the code into the folder. And then we'll do lab time and until you need it.